Peter Rock. Let's, Let's do it. All right, here we go. Ah, I'm on mute. Ah, let's start that over. Welcome to the Heroes Power, everyone. Brought to you by Blizz Pro. I am the guy running the stream tonight. I am Zexorus. Tonight I have with me our P Flame G and uh, one, the only Mr. Stay Tight himself, DJ Tyrant. How you guys doing? I'm good. I'm excited to talk about Heroes this week. A lot of stuff happened. A lot of uh, news to talk about as well. And yeah. I'm looking forward to talk talking about uh, heroes. And uh, Carl, how are you doing tonight? Pretty good. Uh, good to be back. Missed last week for vacation, which was nice. But uh, you know, good to get back, talk about some heroes, have a good time with half of y'all. <laughs> half of half of us, right? Right. Um, well, let's uh, go into our week in games. How about that, uh, DJ? How was your week in gaming? It was pretty bad. I don't think I've won a single Hero League game since playing placement matches with you. Uh, and they've all gotten me on tilt. And yeah, it's just been, it's been a rough week in Heroes. Um, and also, I'm, I'm not at home right now, which is pretty obvious. A little bit of a different setup. Uh, so I haven't played Heroes the past couple of days. So uh, yeah, it's just been fun watching Heroes. It's a little more enjoyable than playing right now. Right, right. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, those placement matches were fun. I, I, there was a couple we should have won and somehow we threw it, threw it worse than Rex Grossman. Um, Ooh. Oh, you, what, you think a five and out's going to win that game? No, you got to <laughs> unleash the dragon. Uh, Carl, how about you? How was your week in game? Um, well, I didn't get back from vacation till Thursday night when I played some Overwatch and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I went down to college station in Austin. A uh, friend had a 21st birthday party. So I didn't get a lot of games done until yesterday. But mm -hmm. in that span of time, I've played nine of my placement matches. And I'm seven and two. Uh, so that's been pretty good. Uh, hey, you commented you were playing with mostly diamond players right now? Yeah, right now. I ended like ranked two or three, and I'd hit one during the season. And mm -hmm. with pretty good placement matches, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, feeling good about where I'll be placed. Yeah, if you win your next one, you should be diamond, I think, three or two or something like that. I don't think I've heard or maybe four. Uh, I think three is the, the highest I've oh, seen people get. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I landed as long in, as I get to diamond, I'm happy. Yeah, I landed in plat, plat three after the placement matches. I tried to I tried to pull Jimmy up with me as much as I could. <laughs> make, yeah. But. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm silver four as well. I had a demotion match and lost that. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my week in gaming has been, you know, done the placement matches with Jimmy, um, and then I'm starting a new show called the uh, Morning Salt Mines. Uh, here on Blizz Pro, it's whenever I wake up until whenever I decide to stop streaming. Um, this morning I started at about 9 a.m. Eastern time. 
Um, come, it's more of a community thing. Come out, check us out. Come play with me. You know, I. It's better than friends. If you're not, if you're home, jump in. You know, I'll. I'll bring you along for the ride. Watch me get angry. But, yeah, this morning was, like, Heroes was just, oh, my God. Like, I had to, I had to rant in our group chat because what I wanted to say was not fit for broadcasting. (laughs) That's what that group chat's there for. Uh, Like, there was, you know, I was salting Wisconsin roads in winter. That's how mad I was. Like at the decision making at of AM players, like I played more tonight, um, and it was infinitely better. Like the decision making of the team and everything like that was just far superior to that in the morning. So uh, I had a demotion match, and that's when I was like, you know, screw it, I'm going Chen this game. I don't care if I lose. And then I ended up just. We, our team ended up just completely obliterating the other team. We got the washing machine off and whole nine yards. It was a lot of fun. Um, but, yeah, that's been my week in games. I was kind of questioning Blizzard there for a minute with the uh, the quality of players. Like, plat-level players making, you know, bronze-level choices. Like, I'm Lily. Let me go run in five... 5v or 1v5 oh o- okay well now we don't have <laughs> jugs anymore thanks for the next team fight you're down for 60 <laughs> yeah yeah there's the aim effect is one thing because there aren't as many people online and so if you like exclusively queue in the morning you'll likely end up placed higher than otherwise so when willie's you know evening plat 3 mmr hits morning plat 3 mmr it's nasty <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're completely right on that. Um, but you know, it's a change. You know, we're it's going to take some adjustment. And speaking of changes, we had a balance patch here recently. You like there that? You, you like that transition? That was a good That's transition. Good. That was good. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Is it a good transition if you point it out though? Yes, it's still. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm patting myself oh on the my back gosh. for that one. Definitely. Come on. So Kael'thas got a change on his living bomb. Uh, the damage over time was reduced by 35. I think. I don't, I don't know if that's a total uh, number per second. 34, about 84 to 50. Yeah. And then the explosion damage increased from 138 to 200. So they're basically uh, trying to do <laughs> less AOE or less single target, but more AOE. Um, I don't know if I agree with this change. That's this a, feels like a buff, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I think King Caffeine tweeted that it was. Yeah, I mean, just look at the AOE damage. That's absolutely insane. It, once that thing spreads, mm-hmm. like, does it? It does damage for every instance of of uh, living if you, bomb. If you're around two bombs that pop, you get hit twice, yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's definitely a buff. Mm-hmm. That's a ridiculous buff. Yeah, I, no, it's strong. Um, I, I mean, I like the direction they're going, because right now Kael'thas can just solo almost any hero in the game. Yeah. Just in one combo. Yeah. But Ima- it wasn't enough. I guess. But imagine the wave clear with this. I mean, mm-hmm. his wave clear was good to begin with. I mean, this is just going to be ridiculous. double that, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, what is the, the creep health? I don't actually know. I don't actually can't know read either. the numbers, right? Right. So uh, you can in a replay uh, or you? something like that, okay. and you can I think you can click on them and see the health. But uh, <laughs> the only time I click on um, <laughs> any minions when I'm casting is like I accidentally clicked on something. And that's like the only way to like get rid of the the character info popped up is just select uh, some item that's about to die or something. Mm. <laughs> I figured no out. I figured out how to do it eventually, like how to unselect. That's why I was checking that Asmo that one day when I was looking then, at the stacks. Yep. I think then after, let me know. Yes, I think it's <laughs> O or something like that. Okay, I will try it, that out. Yeah, it, it was it was handy that cast, but uh, yeah, well, let's uh, Chromie. Willie's favorite hero. Uh, <laughs> all right, time trap. 
Men are cost reduced from 50 to 25. The cash range is increased by 50%, and its health has been increased from 200 to 300. 50% less mana, 50% more range, 50% more health. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. I think the base health was necessary. Yeah. I don't think the others matter too much. Yeah, because you're not using those. You're, you're not using time trap nearly as often as you are the other skills. Yeah, I mean, they they said in the developer comment that like the mana cost is so that you use it often, um, so that you feel better like recasting it and stuff because it's not that expensive. Right. So possibly people will adjust. I think. I mean, Chromie's E is probably you know as much as cool as it sounds. It's your least used skill. Yeah. It's like I I again I agree with the developer direction. Yeah. I don't think it was enough. Yeah, definitely. Like the, the the developer direction, you know, isn't incorrect in 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 trying to get them to use the ability more. But the, mm -hmm. the downside of it is, is you can only have one out at a time, you know, mm -hmm. and it takes that that bit of time for that time trap to set up and everything. So, like, in a panic moment, it's not really going to matter. Yeah, that much. I feel like it's one of the hardest skills in the game to really utilize properly. Because you, you really just have to guess. I mean, obviously you can set them up in, in bushes and stuff like that, and that really will generally get you some value out of it, but you you have to guess where your opponent is either going to be uh, retreating to or uh, attacking from. I think, you know, when I think about it, more skill lies, I think, in like trying to lead them to a trap than mm -hmm. guessing. I mean, because a random guess, they uh, take sure. one of 8,000 paths to you. But you can kind of run over your trap and stuff like that. You know, that's where you can kind of... It's still a hard skill to use. Yeah, I, I mean, think. it's it, it's almost kind of like how Kael'thas uses gravity laps. If, if you go on a Kael'thas and you start following him, you, you're running the risk of getting gravity laps and blown up. So yeah. uh, it's similar to that uh, in the sense that you know how you can set it up in, in that respect at least. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, but I think in the long run, I think cr it's not going to help Chromie out that much in in Hero League and competitive mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, she's she. I still stand by. She needs a total kit rework. Um, yeah, she might. I mean, we'll talk more about hot slog stuff later. But she is at forty four point six percent win rate, but that still puts her third from the bottom. So yeah. It's Not better exactly. than the thirty when she dropped, but yeah, yeah, it was it was it was pretty <laughs> ugly. Uh, but uh, moving on to the support section, we got Rhaegar, basic attack damage from ninety five to ninety nine. I don't think he needed that. Four, <laughs> four AD. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <sighs> you can't face punching wolves now. Um, chain heal reduced from 372 to 344. Secondary bounce is also reduced from 186 to 167. Uh, lightning shield, that damage has been upped by 4 from 60 to 64. And Stormcaller, mana uh, his talent, Stormcaller, level 4. Mana returned increased from 3 to 4 per hero hit. And maximum re mana re returned increased from 30 to 40. Those are... I mean, decent. I, it's not anything game-changing, but the chain heal getting nerfed is pretty much... That's think, pretty brutal. Yeah, that's Blizzard's way of saying, all right, dog, back in the box. You're back in the kennel. <laughs> you're yeah, you're I mean, doing what, too much. What is this, the, the sixth time he's been chained since his rework? It's this, like, um. the, yeah, it's a fifth or sixth <laughs> nerf, nerf yeah. he's seen. Oh, and, man. Like... I knew they wanted to make him good, but good lord, you know, yeah. five, five nerfs in a row just to like kind of get him under control. Yeah, and he, was, and he still sees ton of play. I mean, to be fair, most of the nerfs were kind of this scale, where it's like a all right, he lost his heal by fifty, you know. Well, okay, the the self ancestral was big. Yeah. Um, uh, but then it wasn't as big as everybody thought it was. Yeah. Um, mm. so. It just made players adjust to playing a little more safely. Mm -hmm. You know, this is kind of a—they're backtracking. Like they wanted to play him, they wanted people to play him more safely, and then they're like, "Wait, you know, that was what was cool about Rhaegar. Still putting more damage on him, less heals." Mm -hmm. But 
Yeah, a, a damagey support in this game is hard to balance. Yeah, it, and it, yeah, it really is. Like, you you have to you have to find that fine line between okay, well, is he a healer? Is he a damage dealer? You, you know, you got to figure out what you want him to be. And that's not always possible all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have problems like with Tarant. You know, she's a mediocre healer. But a great damage to support, mm -hmm. like an amazing damage support. Like Hunter's Mark just absolutely shreds stuff on like uh, uh, Cursed Hollow uh, Battlefield. Like mm -hmm. those maps, she just destroys things on. She's great for one, like two v oneing, even one v oneing. If you get the damage bird, like yeah. you take the increase the bird damage, like. She puts out a scary amount of damage, you know, for throwing birds and moon shards around. So, but this was definitely, I think this was actually definitely necessary to kind of even out the support pool. Yeah, it should hopefully help bring some other sports kind of into prominence a bit, but um, which supports that'll be a I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Kerazim has still been uh, kind of right up with Rhaegar as far as being what he's picked at, at high-level play. Uh, Brightwing's kind of starting to see a bit of a resurgence. Um, Medic has kind of seen a little bit of a resurgence, uh, especially with DreamHack this past weekend. And we'll talk more about that a little later in the show. But um, other than that, the supports, I feel like, are remained pretty stagnant. I mean, we see Malph every so often, we see Lili every so often, but other than that, I, and we see Uther, obviously, as well, but, uh, I mean, we've always talked about Uther and just how uh, reliant he is on being with a composition that's kind of all coordinated. Like, he's he's really good at the high level, but he's, like, terrible in Hero League. I mean, you look at his win percentage, it's 45.3%, so, on Hotslog, so. Yeah. It's just something interesting to, to kind of note. And then you have the reverse of that in Morales where, like, she's she doesn't see a whole lot of competitive play. But if you want to win in Hero League, you just pick Morales because the other team almost never knows how to deal with her. Like, at least that's how I feel. Like, mm -hmm. like Morales is almost auto win. It's, it's a pub stomp hero. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Halloween brings up a good point about another change that's upcoming, and that's the health sustain. Um, I'm not sure if we have enough time to cover that, um, as I'm just now seeing it. This is my first time seeing it, too. How did I miss this? this I heard people tweet about it, but I never actually read it. This is from last week, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is pretty interesting stuff. I'm kind of ashamed I missed this. but. So from my skimming... You know the 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 changes. Uh, region globes they're going to buff, um, and uh, just so they're like more important in lane, like deny them from your opponents or pick them up. Healing fountains are going to increase their cooldown and increase the mana they give. So uh, the health is the same. So they're trying to make it like a more impactful, you know, with cooldown thing. So it's not like, oh, my whale's always up. Um, they thought about removing passive health regen yeah. as far as talents and just the things that people have. Ooh, that would um, be scary. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Um, that would be terrifying. The reasoning was like damage you take from Apathur Mine or Toronto Owl, like sticks, all those kind of things that like poke at you. You know, because that's, that's what, like, poke is just really hard to play in this game because of all the supports and passive regen. And then they said they're not going to change supports right now. Good, because there's already not enough supports. I mean, crippling the ones that are in the game in some fashion would be... It would lead to some hilarious meta. Like, everyone just pick burst characters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And just, it would make team fights. It would make casting really hard. Like it yeah. would make team fights almost unreadable because everything would happen so quickly. No, you I know? mean, I think actually, 
high, more amount of or less support, less healing helps poke more than it helps burst. Because there are very few instant. I mean, there's some heals and stuff, but if you've got a burst hero, you know you're mostly negating their support. Mm-hmm. If you've got a poke hero, you know over those eight seconds, you're going to deal fifteen hundred damage, and they're going to heal twelve hundred mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, so, and Matt Cooper actually responded uh, a little later into this thread. If you click the next Blizzard post, and he's the balance designer for heroes, uh, or one of them at least, and uh, he really followed up on pretty much everything that they talked about in that initial post and how they've been playtesting it uh, internally, and they really like the change to regen globes, and they're thinking about making it actually time out quicker which would be an interesting uh, idea. I don't know how much I like that, but that's something they're initially added. I'm not sure how much I like that, but that looks interesting uh, just to change it up a bit. Uh, healing fountains, it sounds like they might do the increased cooldown and increased mana return. Mm-hmm. Um, passive regen, sustained talents, not going to touch those at all because of the feedback uh, that people gave. And the support characters, they're definitely talking a lot about so mm-hmm. this, is, this is good that the for the health of the game they're just really looking at all this i know uh the last time we had changes significant like this it, it really shifted the meta i mean there was the what was it the scaling stuff and that really brought mm-hmm. thrall up to the the pretty much the tip top of the meta yeah. at least for a few months mm-hmm. so i i just really like that they're being very open about this about what they're testing and seeing what kind of feedback that they're they're getting on this yeah it's really cool and they're like hey you know we've thought about you know what happens what happens if we just remove regen from the game and they just put it out there and they hear and you know the community gets to talk about it and the developers like all right it's, it's good reasoning we're not going to do it anymore and you know and it's you know the developers already kind of do that you know they, they sometimes they push it to live they're like this is experimental uh but this is even more you know kind of involving the players in the decision making yeah, and they kind of have to be a little bit more careful about how they change things with how much they're kind of investing into the the ranking systems now and being like, hey, this we want it to remain competitive, but we want you to to like not have to change your entire play style because of something. Yeah, like somebody made it to you know diamond before the health regen changes, and now they're stuck in like platinum <laughs> or gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would be, that would be sad. Um, but I think we'll keep an eye on that and probably talk more about this next week when we have uh, everyone else here too, as well as, as I'm sure there will be more uh, commentary about it. All right. So we were, we were talking about uh, low win percentages earlier. Let's talk about Medivh. He's sitting <laughs> at twenty six percent on hot slugs. That's what I expected. Why? I mean, maybe not that low, but I expected pretty bad. Why? Because he is the definition of a team-oriented hero. Mm-hmm. He's 100% useless on his own. And it's not like a support where you can kind of like top people off, you know, and shrink ray the mm-hmm. enemy and, you know, you've done your job. He requires knowing how to engage your team, when to save things for escape. He requires knowing when big damage can connect with him so you can mitigate he requires effective positioning as far as his scouting and his passive, you know, you know, where are they likely to be? Are you just roaming around doing nothing? Um, it's like, there's just a lot to his kit that's not effective. One, if you don't know what you're doing. And two, if your team doesn't know what they're doing. You know, mm-hmm. if your Illidan dives in, you know, gets the big shield, and he's at a third health, and he keeps going when your, your shield's on cooldown, you know, you, you don't have anything to offer. Right. You know, or similarly, you you portal in, you know, people have to be aware you can't portal out. Or sometimes mm-hmm. they'll just run past the portal. Yeah. You know, they'll be dying. You throw a portal at them like a Thresh Lantern, and none of y'all play League, do you? Never mind. Um, no, it's okay. I, I, I know I know what you're saying, though. You know, throw the portal to them for escape, and they just miss it. Mm-hmm. You know, or you, you can call out things like, hey, shield's up. Go in. Hey, polybomb's up. You know, they're engaging onto it, but it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, what's what's very interesting though is if you click onto the hero page itself, 
take a look at level 20 where the win rate actually skyrockets for Mediv pretty significantly in uh, right at Arcane Brilliance, uh, which gives them 200, which restores 200 mana to all nearby allied heroes and grants them 10% ability power for 10 seconds. That That is at a 50.8% win rate if uh, Mediv players get the talent. It's a very small sample size, though 518 games that are in Hot Slog's database that get to that point. Um, so I'm just wondering if he's very much a, a very, very late game hero. You do have to weigh in a little bit that about half of the games where somebody hits 20, the other team doesn't. Or maybe not half, That's true. but there's, yeah. a, there's a decent amount where if you hit mm -hmm. 20, you have an advantage. So naturally, most heroes' win rates are higher at 20. But that is a very powerful skill. Yeah, that absolutely is. And you're pretty much right on everything. Like he he is the definition of a team oriented hero. Like you have to be firing on all cylinders when you're playing with a Mediv on your team and you yourself playing Medi Mediv need to know what's going on and how to communicate what's up, what's down, portals up where the portal is, you know, things like that. They should let you ping the portals. They should. Like, that. that's kind of needed. Um, I don't know if that's going to make, you know, Hero League a little easier with uh, some teammates. Like what you said, they just run right by the portal. No! <laughs> don't run through the portal. But, like, his his potential is clear. Like, the pros are in love with him. They can't wait to start playing with him. Like they, not, I have not heard a single pro go. I think Medivh's garbage. You know, I no. don't like it. No, <laughs> they are excited about Medivh. They are, they are looking forward to playing with him. Like I, I'm still going to say, he's going to be first pick, first band material. Like, because at that point, you know, at that level of play, like you have the necessary coordination. You've played with these guys forever. You know what to look out for when they're on a certain hero. Like, you're going to see just mind-shattering things happen with Medivh and just, just wonky combos. Like, it's it, – you're going to see teams just melt against Medivh and a, a good comp behind him. Yeah. It might take a couple weeks even after he's legal for teams to really get him. But when they do – you know, it's, it's not like Cho'Gall, where it's like, it's kind of weird, and somebody eventually will figure out the cheese. You know, this is like, mm -hmm. we know it's good. He's just going to be that hard to learn. Yeah. I mean, so. And it's not like, I mean, I've heard some pros like, we really like Chromie. Well, I don't think you won you know, the, <laughs> the summer championships or shut up. Yeah. You know, like, I saw one Chromie game at the summer championship, and I forgot who played it. But I rooted against them the entire time, just because they. You picked would. Them. I would. I think I they did. lost, right? They did. They got smacked around. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't close. I think it was negative synergy that picked them. Hmm. And as much as I, I don't, you know, as much as I love Aussies, <laughs> like, sorry guys, you screwed up. You picked the wrong character. Like, but. Yeah, Medivh is Medivh is gonna be something special. Like yep. He he makes me happy. Like he is he is the kind of hero I want to see. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, that's gonna be oh, disgusting. Yeah. Uh, uh just wait till Tempest uses Medivh to allow Dami Greymane to dive further. Oh, oh, my gosh. oh. his Greymane is already terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I like to say I'm right. The build I wrote on heroesofstorm.blizzpro.com for Greymane <laughs> way back in the day is now the standard, pretty much. There's a few tweaks here and there, but like the general idea, I was right. Because Gillian Cocktail was broken, then they fixed Gillian Cocktail, and then you see them pick the actual talents, and I was, yay. I wasn't wrong. It just took a while. You're ahead of your time. <laughs> I, I, I am. I am a, I am a hipster writer. There I you guess. go. There you go. <laughs> God. I've become what I hated. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote 
just have to write your next articles in a Starbucks on your Mac from now on. Oh, jeez. There you go. Oh, Lord. It's probably no. where Jimmy writes his, actually. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of summer finals. Hey. 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 That was good. That was a good finals. Uh, that was a great finals. <laughs> Holy smokes! I felt bad for my insanity though. I like I was really pulling for him because like the spring championships or maybe it was, it was one of the tournaments leading up to, like in between, uh, mm-hmm. spring and summer, re- regional. Like, I had I had made co- maybe it was a Zotac Cup with uh, uh, Caldor. Like, I started paying attention to my insanity then. Like I was like, these guys run Chogall, like really? Like they because uh, they apparently had been scrimming with him a lot, like and on the small map. So I had been I had been waiting for that, and when they busted that out against MVP Black, I was like, oh, this is going to be a train wreck and the most amazing thing I've ever watched, you know. But mm-hmm. MVP but uh, Black were mine, Sandy. Mine, yeah, well, MVP Black were ready for it. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. That they. They had trouble with it, but they played competently enough against yeah. it to nullify the advantage that Chogall was going to give. And like, My insanity broke into the scene as kind of a cheese team, kind of like Blaze. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they got good. And now, you know, they, they'll still play the Chogall, which isn't really cheese anymore. Yeah. You know, they'll still play some weird stuff, but they're, they're good in their own right. They can play the meta and beat people with it. You know, they lost to MVP, you know. <laughs> I mean, they took a game off of MVP. Yeah. I mean, that's... Nothing yeah. to sneeze at. So I mean. exactly, it's like if you you know you made it to the semifinals and you lost MVP, you did well. Yeah, exactly. There's no shame in that loss. I kind of, I kind of wish it had been a the the final four had been a double LM. It would have been cool. Yeah, Do- totally. I think that. that you know best of three, double LM, finals, grand finals, best of five. Like the, I I'm almost for a bracket reset, in <laughs> Heroes, because it the games go that quickly. You know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like you tournaments can, are getting in between like downtime. I mean, down. P Black like beat a team in like eight thirty or something like that. <laughs> it was a battlefield game, and they just completely wrecked the other team. It was at like they, I couldn't believe the game got finished that quickly. Like they got the top keep down, and the mortal still had all of its health. And I'm like, yeah, you got to push that. Like yeah, that's too much. Definitely. That's too much health to to waste. You you got core damage going. Reminds me, of the one, like six and a half minute mines game I had. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. I mean, but we have to talk about that grand finals. Like, is that not one of the greatest series that we've ever seen played in Heroes of the Storm? Like, yeah, no, that's probably. I, I think it's, that's the greatest grand final we've we've seen to the, date. Yeah. Yeah, like especially game four. Like, I was watching the VODs last night, and I knew who won. I had already seen the results. But I still couldn't believe that Tempest came back in that game. I mean, there was... Yeah. there was the, They got the... MVP Black got the Dragonite. I think they were up, like, level 20 to 18. And they decided to go for core, but they lost someone right before uh, Dragon yeah. got on core. And they just decided to do it anyways. And it was like, the rest of the team was like, yeah, I'm out. And yeah. like, so everyone left except the dragon. Dragon stayed And like there. ETC or something. Yeah. And <laughs> that really kind of started the, the comeback there for uh, Tempest. And just their, their a new rack play was solid and everything. And I don't know. It was just absolute chaos. Like, one of the best series I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I... They threw that game for really hard. Yeah. Like, I made the Rex Grossman joke earlier, and I kind of regret that now because I can't use it again. <laughs> if y'all, you know, we're talking about it, so it's spoiled. You know, y'all already heard it on Twitter. But if anyone watching this has not watched the series, you know, do it. And, yeah. like, sit down and watch it. You know, I've, I've, you know, it, you, I, I like to watch things on the side monitor while I'm playing Heroes or something a lot. But this is one, just, like, sit down. Mm-hmm. Just nothing else. Just enjoy this game. And I think the thing as well is do not skip the post-game analysis. Uh, the analysis that Jay Howe did on the replays was so good, especially on uh, game two. There was uh, it was on Infernal Shrines, and MVP Black kind of came back to win that game. And there's just this 
move by ETC where he took tour bus. He catches he caught Muradin by the shrine and then tour bus and caught three and then Muradin was like, crap, I have to do something. So he dwarf tosses in to try like stun ETC or something. And it just it, it was crazy. Tempest had that game like in hand in MVP you just won the, the team fight that really uh, solidified it and that that ETC play was just something like unheard of. I I'd never seen ETC ETC play like that. I feel like ever. I haven't seen a lot of ETCs since that. <laughs> I can really imagine. Really good. Like and oh, none, and none of them are even remotely good. Yeah, and also that game, uh, Tempest played Kerrigan, and there was this one moment where Kerrigan, uh, both teams are like level twenty, and they're both fighting the like bottom lane. They MVP Black focused on Kerrigan, but Kerrigan doesn't die, and I think it was because there was a double. Um, Storm Shield, and then an Ancestral to follow it up. Oh, and it God. was just, it was literally like Razor's Edge that Kerrigan survived that, and it was, yeah, game, game. T- if you can only watch two games, watch game number two and game number four, but I would recommend the entire series because you, you'll definitely learn something about the game watching these. Wait, two and four aren't those the games MVP Black won? Uh, no. no, MVP Black won n- two number two. Uh, four was on the Dragon Shire that uh, through, Tempest right. should had no business winning, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Game four uh, should have been the end of the series, and MVP put it actually mm-hmm. to one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But was... they didn't. <laughs> like, I remember, watch- I remember watching that, that go down, and I'm like, what is the Dragon Knight doing? <laughs> am am yeah. I... Did this, that was, did this that was like turn... my Hero League matches. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. When, when did I start watching Bronze Tears being streamed? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, oh my gosh. I, yeah, no, I don't that... even lie. That was a Bronze Tier play. No, like, no, that... it was it was a bad play. It was a bad call. That was, ooh. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was uh, definitely something special. And I, I... I don't know what it is. There are times it feels like. You know, when a Dragonite's hitting your core, there's absolutely nothing you can do. And there are times like that where it's just like, what are you even trying to accomplish right here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially going up against a Tassadar that's going to just sit there and shield it for yeah. ever. And you're going in 5v5. It's just, mm-hmm. it, it's it's a very, very tough call to make. But um, I want to talk a little bit more about what you think about some of these drafts because we saw quite a bit of. Uh, Lieutenant Morales, we saw a bit of uh, Kerrigan, and yeah, Tychus was the other one I was going to mention. What do you think of Tychus kind of making uh, a really big impact, I feel like, in in the uh, Summer Championships? It's about time. <laughs> uh, do, do you think he's found his, his spot kind of now against uh, going up against Double uh, Warrior or, or at least uh, being drafted in a position where it uh, makes the other team question drafting the second warrior. I'm staring at you, Carl, for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just staring daggers at you right now. Uh, uh, I, like, I like the fact that uh, Tychus has come back into. Um, uh, he's a good counter against a double tank because Minigun will put an ungodly amount of damage onto onto health heavy targets and. Like tight, like minigun's got an insanely low cooldown on top of that, and plus, like the the frag grenade has always been good. I mean, they took away some of the things that made it better, but then they replaced it with like ridiculous stuff like quarterback. Like mm-hmm. the amount of snipes you get with quarterback is is pretty. It almost feels unfair. You got that one guy who's running away. Oh, I'm by the fountain. I'm safe. Nope. Here, hold this. Hold this grenade from half, you know, two monitor distances away. But I think it, it is a yes. It is about time Tychus finally came back. They they put him in the perfect. They gave him the right buffs at the right time in the right met, meta. Mm-hmm. So Carl was gonna say something. I jumped all over. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't too different from yours. I think he's a good hero in certain situations. I, I think Tyke is actually decent when they only have one warrior. Um, I think people underestimate him in general. But he's a really good pick when they have double warrior. You know, and there's a lot of good damages right now, so you don't need to draft Tyke often. But I think he's a good hero and when people originally buffed him, people kinda gave him a little bit of 
you know, effort. And when he wasn't like a 75% win rate, they're like, I think he's probably bad still. <laughs> and yeah. left it at that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this kind of shifts the meta uh, along with the, the patch that came out today. But also uh, announced and kind of quietly, I think, at first. But uh, as part of the Sunburst Championship, there's going to be a free Heroes uh, play event. So all Heroes will be available for everyone with a Heroes of the Storm account from June 24th, which is like three days from this recording. Uh, until June 28th, so you'll get to play everything. Um, could this have negative effect on Hero League? Hopefully not, but we'll see. You have um, to still be level 5. Yeah, you still have to be level 5, but... Yeah, we'll see. It could suck still. I feel like <laughs> I feel like there needs to be like something alternate for those accounts that literally have all the heroes unlocked. Mm -hmm. I guess I get to play Medivh, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, like... Because... We already have all the heroes. Like, <laughs> I'm just waiting for uh, him to drop to 10k. <laughs> yeah, and in, in, in addition, uh, like they've done in the past, there will be the Summer Championship bundle. So this includes Brightwing with the Monarch Brightwing skin, Terriel, Demonic Terriel skin, Greymane, the Ringleader Greymane skin, Tassadar with Mega Tassadar, the best skin in the game, and Falstad with Buccaneer Falstad, which might be the second best skin in the game. Yeah, those are some really good skins. I think the Greymane one sucks, but it's his only skin, so... Ugh, you guys failed to mention uh, Cyber Dahaka. That one's so <laughs> not on sale. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately not on sale. But yeah, um, I think the summer championship overall was really good. Uh, once again, I was disappointed by Neventic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wasn't too disappointed with Gale Force. Um, I, I really was expecting them to get out of that group, but they just. They had all sorts of travel issues, and we talked about that last week. Um, and just that last series against Please Buff Arthas. Um, I don't know. I think I think it was just nerves and kind of one their their first ever international tournament together. So um, I just hope they stick together and don't make any roster changes um, for them going forward because I think they're in a really good spot right now. And they just need uh, a bit more practice, and hopefully they can get some some scrims against some of these international teams. Cause I know, I think that's one of the problems that a lot of the non uh, Asian teams have is they don't really get to play against these top level teams. So they're kind of, we're kind of just playing against each other in North America and Europe and not necessarily improve. I mean, we're starting to reach the point. I feel like we're how it is in Starcraft where Korea is just starting to really pull away. I don't know what you guys think about that. I mean, we 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 have a very small sample size, but the last two championships this year have been won by uh, mm -hmm. MVP Black and Tempest, respectively. And people expected MVP Black to win BlizzCon. Yeah, like I, I call I think I called either DK or MVP Black winning BlizzCon. Yeah. And just because the the Chinese scene, the Korean scene, like they take MOBAs really seriously. Like, that is that is your life. Like, you don't do anything else over there. If you are a pro gamer mm -hmm. for a MOBA team, you don't get to go out. You are to sit there and you are to practice, and you will be paid well for what you do. You know, but like the the scene, the scene and how they they. Uh, scrim and practice is just like head over head and shoulders above anything us is doing yeah and i i hate to say this but with, with cloud nine not being a, a thing anymore but what do you think blizzcon would have been uh different last year had mvp black been able to qualify yes Short uh, that's Yes. <laughs> That's basically my thoughts too on that. But yeah, I just was curious. What I you think guys Cloud9 thought. could have done it still. But, yeah. uh, you know, there's definitely no doubt that MVP Black could have taken that championship home. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have taken this one home. You know, they had. So, they're an excellent team. Yeah. I mean, they're still. They're, like, right now, they're number two in the world. But, like, I mean, the top two teams are, you know, Korean teams. 
And then you have, you know, my insanity, I'd say, sitting at number four. So. Yeah. And then you got E-Star Gaming, so Asia region is just completely dominating uh, heroes right now. Like, it's going to take <laughs> the NA scene to really hunker down and get this and figure out what they need to do to raise the level of their game to be competitive with uh, the likes of Tempest and MVP Black and E-Star. Um, I give credit for Cloud9 for when they were together for trying. They went over to China, and then they got they got bopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and that's, that's the thing, too, is the Chinese and Korean teams all kind of play each other pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, through the tournaments that they have over there that not necessarily are HGC uh, events, but just events that have enough uh, money that these teams are definitely going to take them seriously. Yeah. So. But I'm looking forward to the... What we got next? So we got the Fall, fall Championship? Yeah, Fall Championship. That should be uh, all the stuff getting uh, set for that is coming up very, very soon here. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that, that might just be coming up in the next um, couple weeks. Let me let me double check when these events are. Oh, yeah, Gold League starts up next month. Um, your Fall Regional number one, July 14th. Uh, they haven't announced the dates for the first Fall Regional for North America, but the, the second one is going to be at PAX Prime, September 2nd through the 5th. Um, other than that, um, looks like we have a little bit of a lull until uh, Gold League and the Europe Fall Regional 1 start. And I imagine NA Fall Regional will be pretty soon here. Yeah. Okay. And then BlizzCon after that, and we'll see how the, the chips fall. Yeah, and then an actual dead period, because nothing really happens in winter. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they revamp their system again. I imagine they will. I mean, they've, uh, I if, it's, they will. if it's similar to how Blizzard has run StarCraft, where basically every single year there's a change to the to the system, I, I don't expect that to be any different for Heroes. But the two months after BlizzCon will probably still be pretty dead. Yeah, that's traditionally been a very quiet period for <laughs> all Blizzard esports, really. We're going to go home, take a break, mm -hmm. rest up, get ready, to, get ready to get back on the grind. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I think what we're going to move on to is... You got 12 minutes, Willie. <laughs> I, this is going to take longer than 12 minutes, so I'm just going to skip it. Uh. Uh, like, I, I, have, <laughs> I have thoughts on how, how Blizzard can improve the system. To make uh, to make their their tournaments more financially attractive, it's gonna take a while. So I'm just gonna push it back to next week. There's not enough time. Like I have a lot of ideas, and there's a mm -hmm. lot of things that Blizzard could do that may or not may not even be feasible. You know, because it would require a huge overhaul to how they how they approach their hats. So. <laughs> Because people love hats. That they do. So, well, I'll, I'll get on that. I'll get on that next week. But what we're going to talk about is everyone's favorite spooky, scary skeleton. Spooky scary down skeleton. my spine. <laughs> on, on Reddit. Uh, Leoric never gets picked. And when he does get picked, he doesn't win. His win rate's in the toilet. His win rate... Where'd it go? 46. 46. Yeah. So it's bad. It's so not... how many games has he been picked in? Four... So his play rate's awful. His play rate's bad. Yeah. Three point... He's like the lead... He's literally tied for second to dead last. Yeah. Third to dead last behind Murky and Chogall. Like... That's pretty bad. Like, how many games was, was uh, Leoric on last? 9,214. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not a good look for him. So the Reddit post brings up basically his issues, right? And it says uh, his sustain is lowered because they've nerfed all the regen stuff. 
Um, and the bunch of other tanks have gotten like just flat health buffs, and he hasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, his CC is slows or in tomb, and in tomb, fifty percent of the time, unless you're King Caffeine, doesn't <laughs> accomplish anything. <laughs> um, and his slow, you can tell it to be decent, but you have to be right next to somebody, and it decays. So he doesn't bring a lot of CC, which you know, hey, Muradin, etc, Johanna, our top three tanks right now. What do they have? oodles of <laughs> CC. Mm-hmm. Uh, his damage is wave clear low. Um, he doesn't lane well because the damage and wave clear low. Um, if the talent tree is weak, I think that's just kind of his numbers are kind of low. I think his talents are decent. But he doesn't... The thing he brings is his trait, right? And they kind of nerfed everything else. But right now people... His trade isn't enough. Yeah, like I remember, I remember when he first dropped, and even after his first nerf, like it was like crap. They have a Leoric. How are we gonna deal with this? And now it's like <laughs> they picked a Leoric. That's adorable. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Let's go bully the poor bones. I can't even remember the last game I saw Leoric in. Like honestly. I'm going to go pick him in Hero League tonight. Let's do that. <laughs> that sounds like I'm oh, glad man. I can't queue with, me till, queue with you until my placements are done. You there you go. You <laughs> oh, man. We should be in range of each other. We we will be. I don't think I'll fall below gold right now. I God, I hope not. <laughs> so, uh, well, if you get in the gold, you can... If you get into gold, you can do a queue with me. Then you can help you me go. help me climb the ranks. Throw your next game really hard, but uh, oh, like oh, back on point, like he, Leoric is not even an option. Like, yeah, no, he's in a very bad spot right now. What do you guys think he needs back? Damage. Damage. His skeletal swing needs more damage on it. Okay. Like. His wave, his like well, that was one of the reasons you took Leor, because because he had just insane wave clear for a tank. You know his sustain. I mean, you either you either buff his wave clear or you buff his sustain over time. Like, don't give him yeah. both because then he's broken again. He's back to old Leor, and you're gonna pick him, and everyone's gonna hate you even when you win, because you're that guy who picks Leor. But like, you you gotta buff one. He he he, mm-hmm. you need to help him out with some CC, and better CC, or you need to help him with his sustain and lane. Because like the post makes a good point. Like Zag still gives him fits. Uh, mm-hmm. He can't lane against Thrall or anybody else like that. Mm-hmm. You just he used just, to be a lane bully. Yeah, he used to be a wonderful lane bully. I I remember the first game I played with Vloric. I had no idea what I was doing, and I was just destroying people. <laughs> like, and well, I, and I'm a tank specialist, you know, among us. Like, yeah, and the thing is, oh, there's so many other great warriors ahead of him. I mean, obviously, Sonya comes very much to mind. Uh, you're in. There's not enough bands that you'd ever get to the point where you're kind of forced to to really consider taking him. Yeah. Because uh, you're always going to have uh, Johanna, Murden, etc. Uh, Arthas, Anubarak, even Stitches we see uh, quite a bit in competitive at least. Um, and those are all uh, options I would definitely take before picking up Leoric at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Wave clear would help. I think if they buffed the slow amount on his skeletal swing too, that would be really nice. Um, you know, you know, kind of make him kind of like Arthas, like good anti-melee melee. You can kind of slow them and drain their health and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Kind of counter engage tank. But. Yeah, he needs love. Yeah, Leoric definitely definitely needs some love. Because, um, I mean, you can even get bullied out by a Tassadar. Yeah. And that's Pretty embarrassing. Bad. That's really, that's really sad. Jimmy? Yes. Is there something you'd like to talk about? 
Yeah, definitely. We have our Patreon at patreon.com slash Heroes Power Hour. Uh, this is just uh, if you feel so inclined to, to help us out uh, producing the show every week and just uh, helping with any hardware issues that we might have and all that sort of stuff. If you donate, it, it gets you into our uh, the Bliss Pro um Discord server is a special patron there and also guarantees you a spot on our uh, play sessions every Tuesday night after the show, which is coming up for those of you watching live on Twitch right now. Uh, usually we, we try to get uh, 5v5 and do Arams, but if we don't have enough, we'll uh, queue up, I guess, I guess now in uh, unranked draft at this point. Yeah, probably. Uh, and have some fun. So yeah, if you feel so inclined, go ahead and check it out and uh, donate and help us out with uh, uh, putting together a show every week for you guys. Uh, and we appreciate uh, anything you can donate, but we also appreciate you coming out and just watching the show every week. Yes, and if you like us that much, you can sub to us. You can press that sub subscriber button. <laughs> give us four ninety nine a month, and well, we only get half that, but. Um, you get the, the sweet Blizz Pro Stay Tight icon. And if you're a fan of Diablo, the Westmark work, Workshop's on tomorrow as well. You get the Clam Chat uh, uh, emote as well. And those, yeah. are, those are fun. Subscribing so. helps at all their other shows. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we got the Westmark Workshop tomorrow. What is that? What, what time is that? 7 p.m. Pacific, or 6 p.m. Pacific. Okay. And yeah. then we got Jimmy's Thursday. other show on Thursday. <laughs> Payload the podcast. Payload. Yep. And then well met, of course. Uh-huh. Sunday nights. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, though, our uh, butt emote we were planning on putting out next uh, got denied by Twitch uh, today. <laughs> <What> emote? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. We didn't actually have a butt emote. I'm just making commentary. I was like, I'll send Trance an email right now. I'm like, bro, <laughs> let's have the butt, man. Give well, you baby. saw today all butt emotes have been removed, right? All of them? Pretty much. I didn't see that. No, I haven't seen yeah. that. Okay. That's Anyways, tragic. That's another, that's another thing. Another place we don't need to go down necessarily. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that is going to wrap it up for this show. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Stick around for the uh, gameplay portion here coming up soon. I have to do some screen regioning because I'm an idiot and I forgot to uh, do the gameplay portion. Unless, <laughs> like, DJ, are you able to play? Uh, It's downloading right now. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, stick around, play with us. So I can hop on. Play against us, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll have enough, but I think we can get at least two in here. Yeah. If you're interested, hop into the game, uh, join the channel BlizzPro, and uh, give us a show. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.